build up to a fishing trip is one of the most exciting things in fishing. Bem River's about five hours east of Melbourne and I just can't wait to get there and wet a line. I'm always going on about local knowledge. It's so important if you're gonna catch fish consistently. That doesn't get any more local than Mark Cunningham's Bem River Bait and Tackle. He's the man on the job. The only thing about this place, it's such a long way to the boat ramp. 400 metres and two kangaroos. A beautiful morning at the Bem River in East Gippsland. This is Adam Ring on my boat, Mitch Chapman, and these two young blokes work for me at my Tackle World store in Cranman. Now Adam, on your day off, you like to go fishing? and you've invited me along. I'm very appreciative, mate. What's the plan at Bem River today? Mate, Bem have to be one of my favourite spots on this lovely earth. Um, bit of a mixed bag today, Paul. Brim, perch, tailor, salmon. The mouth has just been opened down at the entrance and um, I reckon we're in for a good day. I've been coming to Bem for at least 20 years. I love it. It is a piece of fishing history. Adam, let's go and I'm getting the wheel off Mitch. Give me my boat back, Mitchell. Yeah. What we're going to do is cruise up and down the river uh, like we are at the moment with these small squidgy 80 mil wrigglers which Mitch is holding in his hand right now. And as you can see the whole river's lined with snags, trees, um, tea tree and things like that which we'll be casting out hopefully to pull out a brim or a perch. Now this is one of my favourite snags on this river, produced a lot in the past. Um, as you can see Paul, just over there, um, that little bit of tea tree comes into the water. You've got another stick that comes off and the fish like to hold in there, so uh, let's crack a few. There's only one thing left to do mate. That's it, cast. I've always had a true romance for Bem River. Almost 20 years ago, my good mate Greg Shan took me under his wing. We went to Bem River for the weekend and I've never looked back. This inlet starts with the Bem River coming from the hills and then opens up into Sydenham Inlet. Then from Sydenham Inlet to the Channel and out to Bass Strait. It has beautiful estuary fishing and the surf beaches, they are second to none. Now this particular inlet has not been netted since 1936. So you can just imagine how many big fish are sitting there waiting to see your bait or lure. My very good friends Don and Di Cunningham ran the cosy nook there for almost 20 years. They're salt of the earth and they're what Bem River is all about. Believe it or not, the population is only 70. So when you move into town, things go haywire. It is a pristine piece of Australia and it's not hard to understand why the fishing is so good. On our trip today, we're chasing estuary perch. And we target these fish by casting small plastic lures towards the structure. Of course, the fish are sitting in the structure because they're looking for a feed and a little bit of cover. I think the fishing's gonna be tough, but I just love being at Bem River. How picturesque and beautiful is this place? The river was a little quiet before. Um, we had a chat to a few of the guys at the, at the ramp. They told us to come out and throw a few vibes around the lake and that's exactly what we've done. Come to Paul's favorite spot and we've just landed ourselves a nice little black brim. Just put him into the net. Just a pup, but it's still a fish. Just got that on that little vibe. Just casting it over the sand flats and he just smacked it. So, yeah, one on the board. Yep, yep, here we go, Mitch. Oh, that's it, he's on. Hang on. Get this in quick. It, it was shaping up to be one of those days, but. What do you got? With persistence. It looks like a very nice little black brim. Now the black brim, they're found all around Gippsland Lakes, pretty much widespread around Australia, yellowfin and black brim. This guy's a little blacky. We'll get him in the net and we'll see what did the damage. Not one of the biggest specimens you'll ever see, but a fish nonetheless. And how is that for a beautiful East Gippsland black brim? Love it. He's nailed that little 
little mirror shad right in the corner of the mouth there. The back treble, little stinger hook, just making sure he wasn't going anywhere. Love your work. Doesn't get much better than that. A beautiful day of fishing on the Ben River comes to a close. It's been tough coming here this time of year, just after they've blown the entrance. It was always going to be feast or famine, hot or cold. Let's just say it's been Fisher and Pikel. Very, very freezing. But we persisted. The boys both caught a brim. Tomorrow we're heading to Marlow. We're going to catch some beautiful estuary perch if everything goes according to plan. And the good news for you at home is that tomorrow is after these ads. Yesterday was a little bit tough at the BEM, could be an understatement, it was really tough, but this is the reason we've come to Gippsland. Marlow, about a 45 minute drive last night, the boys were here a week ago, they absolutely smashed the perch. What do you reckon fellas, the weather's on our side? It's going to be a cracker, Paul. Very excited Paul, going to be awesome. Well, this is why you come to Gippsland, for days like these, this is just a cracker. Quite as the E-Tech is, we've turned it off. There's a car coming over the bridge you may hear in the background, and our bridge is our structure. Fish like to live in a home. These bridge ponds you're about to see, that's where the Brim and EPs live. And I know that, because Adam and Mitch told me last time they are here, they caught plenty. So we're gonna use the electrics at the pointy end. We're just gonna cruise up, get our plastics working, and very shortly you'll see the reason we've come to Marlow. That's better. Feels Feels like a oh, it's a perch. Oh, it's a perch. Nice. Good little perchy. These guys have found all around the Gippsland oh. Lake system. He's just smacked the 80 mil wriggler. And if we get the nut, I'll thumb grip him. Oh, look at that. Uh, oh, always a good way to... And there we go. Nice little EP from the Broad River River. You look at that mouth, they're just made for smacking shrimp, crabs. Little bait fish, yeah. Didn't he hit hard, mate? Yeah, he did, Paul. For the size, I reckon these fish probably pull as hard as any other fish in these sort of estuary systems. Just a cracker, yeah. when you say, for his size, how big do you reckon he's in centimetres? I'd say to be around at 35, 36 centimetre mark. Probably looking at 20, 25 years plus in age. So a very slow growing fish once they reach this size. So. I'll tell you what, he's gonna let this fish go, but think of this, mate. That fish is older than you are. He is. Sad to think that. that is mind blowing. That's why we don't need estuary perch. They're a sports fish. We let them go because we love them. Off she goes, mate. Oh, yes, gotcha. Oh. Hey. Oh, nice. Like you're on there. What are you calling, Paul? Uh, I'm calling a little a perch little now. Perch. I've seen <laughs> 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 Things you do, aren't they just beautiful fish? I'll come around the side here. He's only a pup, but come here, mate. Only a pup, but I said to our cameraman, whose last name resembles this river very much. <laughs> We're fishing in the Broad Rib, and I, I forgot to. Know, and his name's Andrew. How's that work? <laughs> oh, Andrew Broad Rib, sort of. Yeah. Look at that. There's my little bloodworm wriggler. That is just a little EP. Would it be legal size, fellas? Oh, legal size down here is 25 centimetres. Um, it'd be very close to, I reckon, Paul. Very close. I was a bit concerned about young blokes of today. We got on the boat and I saw the old sun silk wax and I thought, yeah, fishing fellas. But then I found out they've actually filled this tub with squidgy S Factor. Look at that. It's a gooey substance and it's been scientifically designed to attract brim and other species. When you buy your squidgies in the pro range, you get a packet of this stuff and it's a very good idea just to wipe a bit on your lure, your soft plastic, and it actually makes the fish so keen to eat they just can't help themselves. And the other thing, when they suck it in, if they're not quite on the chew, they'll go, hmm, that tastes all right. It'll just allow them to hang on it a little bit longer so you can set that hook. So keep an eye out for the squidgy goop. It's pretty sticky, but the fish just love it. Yep, yep. On, on again, Paul. Beautiful, mate. It's going to Archer Valley, it looks like. 
A little Trevally. I reckon he's a Trevally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just amazing what you get around these bridge pylons and the structure. Rim perch Trevally. Well, in five minutes we've got a Trevally, a few perch, Taylor. I'll get your rod for you. Give me that. Nice little silver. Again, no big fish, but for their size, pull pretty, pretty hard. And he's jumping all over the place. Now, the Gippsland Lake system is full of silver trevally, and they are one of those fish for land-based anglers that they just save the day, and not many fish pull harder than trevally. You can hear him going, ooh, 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 ooh. There's one thing left to do, that's put him back. Enjoy. And away she goes. What a start. Today's the day. It's all going to happen. Let's get some more. I just want to run you through what I'm doing here. This technique of finessing is all about watching the line. I can actually see this fin's braid coming towards me with the ripples, and the idea is to let the plastic go all the way to the bottom. So it's still sinking, and I'll be able to see when it stops because that line will stop going down. Still sinking, and when my line meets there, we should be right. It's still going down. It's all about patience. And I just lift that off the bottom and back down. And you'll actually see the bite more often than not in the line rather than feel the bite on the rod tip, which is oh, like oh. that. <laughs> I saw it and he got me. <laughs> I think he might be another little perch. Oh, he's going. Still going pretty hard though. Well, Mitch. Back that I'm, drag off. I'm just going to keep on fishing because I reckon I might get it and make it a double, eh? I reckon we might. How good is this spot? It, it's schooled up pretty big, so I think we may be in for a good day, Polly. Well, I reckon we're already in for a cracker day. It's been sensational and we're not even 500 metres from the boat ramp. Again, similar to the size that Paul got. Just a nice little perch. There he is. Oh. Beautiful little fish. Let him go, mate, because I think there is plenty more of his brothers there. Gotcha! Oh. Speaking of way too much fun, Ads, these perch just go. Oh, and you've got to get them out quick because there's snags down there. Just like the bass fishing in the States. Pull them up. Some better size, Paul. Yeah, oh, I want to show you something too. There's actually a parasite on this guy if we come in nice and close. I learnt just the other day, these parasites have a name that I forgot because it was like Scientificus Amastabolata Kilmadata, and I'm not into that stuff. But that parasite, I'm going to pull him off. They actually eat the perch's fins. They're nasty little things, and what they do, I'm going to keep that for later. Oh, so we can get a close-up. That parasite eats the fins. You can see he's got a nasty gap there. Then he crawls around into the perch, and he latches onto his tongue. And quite often you see that parasite on a trevally. And I bet if we check that trevally we caught earlier, he would have that parasite on his tongue. They cut off the blood supply to the tongue. The tongue actually dies, and then the parasite becomes the fish's tongue. And as the fish gets a feed, so too does a parasite. So imagine having a parasite latch onto your tongue, kill it, and then you've got a bug that's actually your tongue. Pretty scary stuff. I only learned that the other day. Thought I'd share that boring story with you. Oh! And he's... Oh, he's a nice fish, he's man. I'll, go, I'll get, get him for you. Just smack that 80 mil wriggler, that squidgy wriggler. Come on, mate. Open your gulp. Oh, he's a nice one. Just a beautiful looking fish, this, these guys. Better be careful. The gill rake is there, like a barra, they call them a barra of the south. Just a little bit smaller. They've got the dorsals there that are very spiky. Be careful with your hands and just handle them with care. As Paul's doing, he's got the thumb grip there and that's probably the best way to handle them, Paul. And always support the belly of the fish with your second hand. If I was to hang this fish by the jaw like this, we may well break his neck. We don't want to do that, so support the belly. Who'd ever thought you'd catch a fish that beautiful? on a piece of rubber. It's just such a simple technique. Just bounce that plastic across the bottom. Watch the line. Ooh, I like that swirl. And here he comes, and this is just perch heaven. And even though they're not big fish, look at the displacement of water and how hard these fish fight. Come on, mate. Come over. Estuary perch, an absolute Victorian icon. <laughs> oh, they are 
so quick these things, I just inhale it, uh, and that is what happens when you're not quick enough. That's just my jig head, he's actually come through and taken the wriggler. When the perch are on the go, I always keep a few spare bloodworm wrigglers in the pocket because you go through them, and that is the 80 mil squidgy bloodworm wriggler. And just a little tip about putting your bloodworm wriggler on, put the hook through the top there, and it is so important that it goes on straight. So push it straight like that, and it just wants to come out right on the little dorsal fin that it has in the back, and then push it up towards the jig head, and the jig head becomes your little fish's head. That sits up there beautifully, and you can see that is straight as a die. That is the important feature, because then it'll swim nice and straight. If it's got a kink in it, it'll turn, won't look natural, and the fish just will not eat it. That is a fish catching machine. It's going pretty hard again, similar sort of size. A lot of these guys. He's actually a little bit better, Polly. He's nice, isn't he? These guys do get confused for the Australian bass. Uh, basically, they're kissing cousins. So they're actually in the same family, and, and estuary perch and bass look very similar. What are the major differences if people are fishing for them? The main difference is the bass has a more rounded head. These guys have that dished forehead there and the protruding bottom jaw. So. So it does get very confusing with perch and bass. Sometimes they even breed and you get a hybrid and then no one knows what's going on. They're actually doing some studies with them here at the moment, testing their DNA to see if they're real perch, real bass, or a mixture of the two. Yep. He had you, did he? He had me, he had me. <laughs> I'll go one too. Oh. I've oh, got, nice fish, mate. I've got a nice broom, Polly. What do you reckon you got? Uh, I, oh, could be wrong, but I think mine's a Trevally. Little Trevor. <laughs> um, uh, we might get the net out. You might need the net for him, mate. That is a beautiful Trevally. I'll get this net because Adam's all buckled up. There you go. Environ it under him. Crack a fish, mate. Well done. Lovely fish. And this spot is literally going off its tree. That is a big broom, mate. So that'd be close to 38, 39 centimetres. I just got a little silver Trevally, and that's the beauty of the Gippsland Lakes. What have we got here? Oh, Ludric. Oh, Ludric. Ludric. Very nice. It has definitely been a mixed bag this afternoon. Oh, in yes. Environet, such a wonderful thing. Well done, Dave Irvine. Great effort. Just about to disappear behind a tree. So that's a ludric. I'm gonna keep coming this way. We're doing it tough. Beautiful ludric. It has 11 stripes, sometimes 12. Not to be sort of mixed up with the zebra fish, which has about nine. Beautiful fish, a weed eater mainly, but they also eat soft plastics and yabbies. It's going back. Away you go, Mr. Ludric. What a cracker session. Believe it or not, the fishing was so hot yesterday, we never actually got to get to the destination we were tracking for. About three kilometres from the bridge, there's a big snag, and we reckon there's lots of thumping perch on it. So this morning, we're gonna resist temptation, go straight under the bridge, we're heading to Perch Paradise. There's plenty of techniques for catching estuary perch. You can fly fish for them, you can lure fish, you can bait fish, and then you can dissect each of those techniques. And if you dissect lure fish, you can go soft plastics or hard bodies. Now Mitch, today we're using soft plastics. What's the go with your blood worm wriggler? Well Paul, we're gonna be throwing these into these snags, working them nice and slow, nice and deep, because the fish are sitting just off the bank there, and we're just gonna be using this fins line and just looking for that pluck, looking for that tick, as soon as we hit that, we're setting these hooks and getting into these fish pool. So the benefit of a soft plastic over a hard body, you cast a hard body and it's hard to work it right along the bottom because it tends to want to float up or sink straight to the bottom. The plastic, you use the jig head, but you let it hit the bottom, lift, lift, bounce. Mitch is going to put a cast in this snag. The camera's going to follow the line. He'll talk us through it. And what you'll actually see is that line, the belly, because soft plastics fishing is all about technique. And he's got the technique down pat. And we're just waiting for that pluck or that tick in that line to go tight and then we'll get some fish. Just twitch, twitch, pause. Oh, yes, yeah, got him. Well, well done, mate. Oh, it's a good, good fish. fish. We'll tighten up that drag. We're sitting a bit oh, deep. Oh, see him come up. He's a good fish, Paul. <laughs> Listen to that drag. Can you, you know, pass the net, please, Adam? A little Shimano fire, bud. 
Oh, look at that for an EP. Mm. Over the top of the camera. Love your work, yeah, Mitchy. Oh, he's taking a bit of the line. Like, loosen that drag off. Good idea, mate. Oh, he's nearly, he nearly kissed the boat, this oh, fish. No. Oh, he's got, and don't they have some going on? They do, Polly. Look their size. They go hard as. Oh, he's a good fish, he's mate. Above 40. Look close. Slide him in there. Oh, lovely, Polly. Look at that. Mitch, that is a cracker estuary perch. Well done. And for people out there, I'm just going to try and grab him in the thumb grip. For people out there who say, oh, Paul, just grab that net for me, mate. For you, Paul. A lot of people, Mitch, say, oh, soft plastics don't work. And in the car on the way down here, we were saying, look, they do work, but people just don't know how to fish them. And wasn't that a great example of just watching that line, mate? That's it, Paul. No time for talk. <laughs> it's all systems go here. Adam was just thinking about the next thing he was going to say. He said, I can't stress, I can't Oh my goodness, there's a fish. Oh, look at that. I'm going to have to swap my rod for a net. And when I say a net, I'm not talking about the African girl we sponsor called a net. I'm talking about the Enviro net. Oh. oh. Adam, this is just too good. <laughs> that is two casts this morning for two estuary perch. They're just full of life, these little fish. And he took us so close to the boat. Oh, my. oh, he's engulfed it too, mate. Now, Adam, let me just say we can't stress enough <laughs> the importance of good technique when perch fishing. And there it is. Beautiful little estuary perch, and he has engulfed that lure. It's all over. You know what? I think it's nearly my turn. Adam, up the front with Mitch the anchor boy. Perch fishing in the snags is so much fun. He's only a baby, but gee, it hit hard. And there he is on the surface. Look, they've still got lots of go in him. You just see those gold flanks as the sun hits him in this tannin-stained water. Estuary perch, they are beautiful fish. Come here, mate. Ooh, got some nice, sharp little raspy teeth in there too. And that's the perfect hookup. You see that right in the hinge of the jaw there, just through that big lip, if you can get it past that. You're doing very well. 80 mil bloodworm wriggler, the undoing of many beautiful estuary perch. I think I love this snag, and I think I love the Marlow system. It is just a cracker. Well, hopefully this hot session has given you a bit better insight into how to fish soft plastics properly, and also shown you just how beautiful this Marlow system is. How good were those perch, boys? It was unbelievable, Paul. Going hard, fighting dirty. We lost a few, but we also got a few in the boat. Just an unbelievable session. It's just too good. If you want to learn more about perch fishing and soft plastics fishing, pop in and see Mitch Chapman and Adam Ring at my Tackle World store in Cranbourne, and otherwise, go to ifishtv.com.au. Catch you on the water soon.